Hi, and welcome to Cube Audio. In this episode, we'll take a look at the overall features of the Mobi One controller. For this demonstration, we will be operating exclusively in Mode One, the default mode. In this mode, we have control of all of the features of the channel settings window, as displayed here not forgetting the EQ controls on its adjacent page. The main section of the Mobi One, in Mode One, is used for controlling the parameters in the channel strip. To the right of this area are the functions found on the right of the channel settings window in Cubase. Below the main section are the mode select, track control, dial speed control, and transport functions. The first feature we'll take a look at is the track control. As you can see, turning the track control dial changes the chosen track while simultaneously updating the channel settings window. If we want to go to a track that is further away from our current position, we can use the track jump feature by pressing on the track dial. As we can see, this lights up an amber LED to help us know which state we're in, step or jump. Now when we move the dial, it goes up in increments of 10. Pressing the track dial again returns us to the step state. Now let's take a look at the channel strip settings. We can see that we have the noise gate, compressor, EQ and tube saturation as our default mode 1 settings. If we go over to our EQ page, we can also see that we have control of the pre section, including the high and low cut frequencies section in addition to the pre gain control. Looking at the mode 1, we can see these sections mapped out from left to right. Let's dive into the deep end and have a play with the EQ controls. The first thing to know is that each small white button acts as a bypass for its particular function. I'll go ahead and take the EQ section out of bypass. First the overall bypass, then each of the four EQ bypasses. I'll take control of EQ3's gain, and you can see the changes that are made. Now, let's change the dial speed from fast to detailed. We do this by pressing the dial speed button. This allows us to control each parameter with much more detail when it is required. The default mode is on. Each of the four EQ sections work in much the same way. Pressing the feature dial switch will return it to its default setting. Let's take a look at the channel strip. Pressing the bypass button enables the chosen section. In this instance, let's turn on the compressor. As we can see, we have full control of all of the compressor functions, including the auto makeup and auto release functions. Once again, turn off the dial speed function allows us to make much more granular adjustments. Again, all the controls work in much the same way across the page. Moving along to the right of the main section, we can see the control room headphone style. Please note that this function is only available to Cubase Pro users and must be set up in Cubase accordingly. To make adjustments to the overall monitor output level, we simply turn the dial. Pressing the dial allows us to take control of the headphones level. Pressing again returns us to the monitor feature. 
Next, let's take a look at the pan and volume settings. Turning the dials changes the values correspondingly. Whilst using the dial speed function, does as it did before. Pressing the volume and pan dials returns the features to the default values. Finally, let's look at the transport section. Each key, when pressed, will light up a corresponding LED to let you know what is happening. The play and stop functions have been incorporated into one key, much like the spacebar operates on your PC. The record feature flashes red when in use. We can also drop in a recording whilst playing. The forward one marker key takes the play cursor to the next marker in the sequence. The back one marker feature does the same but in reverse and also has an extra feature. When pressed and held, it will return to zero in the timeline. That sums up our overview and introduction to the Moby One controller. Thanks for watching.